us know her for her work on the series Webster. Here's a scene with Susan, her husband Alex Karras, and Emmanuel Lewis. And let me remind you, it's 10 minutes of 7 in the morning in Los Angeles, and Susan Clark looks gorgeous at this hour. <laughs> How are you, Lee. Susan? Hi, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. We, I want to talk about WAND and the reason that you're doing this because of Mother's yes. Day, but reminisce with us just for a minute about Webster, working with Alex, doing that kind of grueling schedule. Was it wonderful for your marriage? Uh, it was wonderful for, I don't believe, Eileen, that I could have done the series without doing it with Alex. And it was stressful on the marriage because we never had anybody to come home and complain to. <laughs> Except each other, huh? Except each other. But it really was a good experience. And I think because it was a family show and it was a, it was a comedy, uh, that occasionally we were, could get in some serious issues. But basically we were kind of living eventually a parallel life to the show. Now it is in syndication, so one would think you could sit back and rest on your laurels, but no, not you. You're, you're a busy lady, aren't you? Yes. What are you doing now, project-wise? Are you involved in something? Well, actually, we're still shooting more episodes of Webster, because there's going to be 150 episodes of our uh, visit to the Papadopoulos household every week. Oh, that's so, great. So uh, it's in syndication, but we're still making new ones for syndication. May I just tell you that I so admired your portrayal of Amelia Earhart, and I wonder if you have ingested her and, as a human being as much as I have. I think she is um, a kind of, in a way, uh, too forgotten. Did you enjoy doing her? Yes, I did. And, you know, I think that doing Babe and Amelia has been, in a kind of way, just very personally for me, an inspiration to working in the peace movement, because each of those women was very involved in women's issues, in equality, and I suppose if they were alive today, they'd be involved in the peace movement. You know, and what you're doing involves a collective effort for mothers around the country for Mother's Day, and I wish there was more of that because I personally believe that mothers can make an enormous difference. Do you agree? I think that mothers have to make the difference. I think that women represent 80% of the peace movement, and the reason that the Women's Action for Nuclear Disarmament and I got together last summer was that, uh, as a spokesperson, I think that women will at least pay attention to one day to celebrate their own motherhood and also Mother Earth and know that even one person can make a difference. Even if you buy a flower or sell flowers, that we really have to turn this around. 25% of the children in this country live below the poverty line, and 80% of the poor are women. So uh, we have to do something to help ourselves and our children. We it's really, obviously, I'm it's sorry. not in the interest of the administrations, either state or federal, to really help us. So we have to help ourselves, and we can't afford the arms race anymore. I mean, it's beyond a question of ethics. We just simply can't afford it as families. Uh, the feminization of poverty is an enormous issue and, and one that even the candidates, the, the, those that are running today, are not talking to. Does that disturb you? Yes, it does disturb me. I think that what women have to do and people who care about these issues is get a list of questions and address the candidates, whether they're uh, for city office or state elections or federal elections, and simply not let them up. They have to address this. We cannot be seven trillion dollars in debt and have two percent of our of our tax dollar go to the poor and two percent for education and fifty seven cents on the tax dollar to the military industrial complex. It, it just isn't going to work anymore. And I think it's time that women said, "Okay, we've had enough. Now we're going to celebrate Mother's Day. We're going to wear our lovely corsages." and now we're going to change things because we have to have some kind of secure future for our children. Everybody talks about national security, national security. What is national security if our kids don't have some future to look forward to? Why should they go to school? Why shouldn't they take drugs and get drunk and do all these things that many young people are doing because there is not any hope? Boston and is I a very... We can, we can provide hope with a loving heart and a very strong commitment. Wear a mum on Mother's Day, and Boston is a very involved city. Um, do you know if WAND is actually up and running here in Boston? Will there be WAND booths? Is, WAND is up and running. WAND is really organizing the WAND Mother's Day Ball, but um, there are a lot of Center for Psychological Studies in the Nuclear Age at Harvard, Dr. John Mack, we send out over 400 letters, and in the first year, Eileen, we have over 30 national organizations that have endorsed 
this campaign of wear a mom for a mum. All right, wear a mum for a mum. I'll be wearing mine mom. on Mother's Day. <laughs> Susan, thanks a million for joining us. Good words. We need to hear them more often.